What up, Pocket Toads? Happy Monday. Welcome back to another Modern Monday gameplay video. Today, we're going to be trying out some Ren and Six 8 Rack, suggested by my patron Diothar, who found this deck from Puff Trees, who built an 8 Rack deck around Ren and Six and Kroxa because they're pretty good cards uh, for 8 Rack. So, Diothar came to me and wanted me to brew my own variant of this deck, which today's list I did brew. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much to Diothar for the suggestion. So, today's deck's main focus is Ren and Six because Ren and Six is really like the perfect card for 8-Rack if you think about it. Um, because two of 8-Rack's staples are Smallpox and Raven's Crime. And Smallpox does everything you want a Rack deck to do. Makes them discard a card, which is, you know, Rack's main plan. Makes them lose a life, which in the late game we're ultimately trying to do. Makes them sack a creature, so it's a good removal spell, because we kind of lack that. And then makes them sacrifice a land, which if we're making them like discard cards and they're gonna end up discarding land cards, and then they sack a land, they're gonna end up mana screwed, which is perfect. And the problem with smallpox is that we also have to sack a land, but Ren and Six gets a land back, so it doesn't really hurt us. Raven's Crime makes your opponent discard cards, but you can retrace it by discarding a land card, which sometimes you can't do. But with Ren and Six out, you can guarantee that you can make them discard at least one card and retrace Raven's Crime every single turn. So yeah, like I said, Ren and Six is really like the perfect card for ARAC if you think about it. So we're going to try it out today and see if it really is. So as always, if you want to play today's deck along with us on Magic Online, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code Marin Moon to save 15% off, and you can rent today's deck and try it out for yourself. If you wanted to buy this deck in paper, consider purchasing through our deck list link down below. That is our TCGplayer.com affiliate link, and when you purchase anything through that link, it really supports the channel. And of course, special thanks to all my patrons who have been scrolling down at the bottom of the screen this whole time. It is because of you guys that this channel is possible, so thank you very much. Let's jump right into the deck tech and the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. The rack is usually based around Shrieking Affliction and the namesake The Rack, which punish your opponent for having fewer than two cards in hand. And Khan the Great Creator can go and grab another rack out of the sideboard, which is why we only got three racks. It can also go grab a plethora of other valuable hate pieces for a situation, but we'll go over those during the deck tech portion. So let's go on to our next slide. So just in case you skipped over the intro, Ren and Six is used to get back lands in the graveyard that we incidentally sack with smallpox on accident, but we're gonna make our opponent also sack a land, which is the good part, and also make them discard a card, which is the Rack's plan, and sack a creature so it's a removal spell. So Ren and Six has synergy there with that, but also synergy with Raven's Crime. Because Raven's Crime makes the player discard a card, but you can retrace it by casting its cost in addition to discarding a land card. So Ren's gonna return a land to throw away to Raven's Crime so you can keep making your opponent discard at least one card every turn. But this is not our only discard, we also have Liliana, which makes your opponent discard another card every turn. You discard a card as well, but again, has synergy with Ren, because if we want to keep what we have in our hand for later, um, we can get back a land with Ren and just pitch that to Liliana so we can keep what we got, while also continuing to make our opponent discard cards. Can also make them sack a creature, so it's another removal spell. And then Inquisition of Kozilek can just take something out of their hand with CMT3 or less for the early game. And then Wrench Mind makes them discard two cards, and unless they discard an artifact card, and unfortunately, there is a decent amount of artifacts in um, Modern right now. You know, if you're going up against a deck with Arkham's Astrolabes or something like that. If it's not an Arkham's Astrolabe deck, though, you really don't have to worry. Uh, but we do have a little bit more removal in this deck in Lightning Bolt and uh, Ensnaring Bridge. The reason we have Lightning Bolt is because if we have the Ensnaring Bridge, then a top deck like Fatal Push or whatever would not be useful, whereas Bolt can just go to face. But Ensnaring Bridge is going to protect our walkers because we do have 11 total walkers in here. And uh, we do have more in the sideboard for Karn to go and grab if we need one to protect ourselves. We got a total of 24 lands, plenty of fetches for Ren to get back, and let's move on to the sideboard. I'm not going to take too long because there is a lot of singletons for Karn. So we've got a Walking Ballista for grindy situations. Tormod's Crypt if we need to hit the graveyard, but we have zero mana up. Grab Digger's Cage to stop Recursion, and a Pything Needle to hit Planeswalkers. Abrupt Decay, just to answer whatever. Another Rack for Karn to grab just in case we need it to win. And then a Damping Sphere against Storm Decks. Liquid Metal Coating to destroy lands in a situation where the board is safe. 
Uh, two copies of Ashiok to make Primeval Titan decks not able to search. We got two copies of Maelstrom Pulse to hit anything like Planeswalkers and such, but also able to hit Ley Line of Sanctity, which is what we really need gone. And then we have one more copy of Ensnaring Bridge for Karn to grab if we need it. And we have one copy of Scepter of Fugue just in case we need another discard outlet. And then we have one copy of Witchbane Orb to give us Hexproof just in case we're going up against Burn or a combo deck that's trying to hit us in the face. So that's about it. I'll get the stream started and I'll see you in the first round. Hey guys, just a quick note before we get into the gameplay, and I probably put a message of this up on screen during the intro as well, but just in case you missed it, I will explain here again. So if you hear a lot of background noise during today's gameplay, that is because this is my first day ever using Streamlabs OBS, and I was configuring everything to how it was when I was using OBS Studio, but the last thing I forgot to do was to put on noise gate and noise suppression for my microphone, so it was capturing all of the background noise. So just letting you know, sorry if the background noise bothers you. Let's go on to the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. Got a game here against Beamers 1, and we won the die roll. We're going to be on the play here with some Jund Rack. Uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. I don't know if I Shrieking Affliction on turn 1 or if I just hold up Bolt on turn 1 to protect Red. I'm not expecting a two toughness guy, though, so I, I will just throw out Shrieking Affliction here. Because if they throw out an X1, Ren will just, you know, minus on it and kill it. Uh, all right, island go, sure. Hopefully they don't spell snare this. I'm gonna play a fetch land so I can get some value off of Rin. Actually, no, that didn't make any sense. I don't know why I did that. Thought scour me. Oh, it's mill. <laughs> it's mill. Why did they thought scour me in response to Ren? Because now they, they had the chance to give me back a better land. That made no sense. That's a lot of cards you got there, opponent. Um. Alright, I guess we're taking up Ren for nothing here. You know what? Yeah, I took up Ren for nothing. Pass a turn. All we're trying to do with this game is just get Ren to ult so that we can start recurring Bolt. And keep as many lands in hand as we possibly can. So in that case, I probably should have played Polluted Delta and fetched a Bloodstained Mire. Uh, which I will go and do that. So let's let's go get as much red sources as I can. So go get a blood crypt. Tapped. Use red. Return polluted delta. Play lily. They could have Vantress Gargoyle, so I'm not going to ditch Bolt. But if they do, I could just minus lily on it. But this is definitely... Oh, it didn't get drowned in the locked. Sweet. I guess I'll just ditch a land. Makes sense. Keep the backup Ren just in case this one gets murderously rowed. Although I don't think they run murderous rider and mill. You would like to collab all sometime or still sometime. It is hard because we're on opposite side of the states. Yeah, true. All right, take up, return, uh, return Urborg. Play Peter Land. Let's plus Lily. Ditch the Urborg. And let's crack the Pete Land, see if we can get something to do. Nothing to do. Yep, hashtag Peterland. You know it. Peterland is so good to like recur with with Ren. Like, I I even tried to brood a Ren deck that just tries to recur Ghost Quarter. Just like Naya Naya Leon and Arbiter Ren. Imagine imagine Ren with Cat Jesus. 
I think that everybody's pictured Ren with Cat Jesus and Bird Jesus at least once. Okay, Crypto Command's gonna bounce Ren. But joke's on you, opponent. I have two Rens. Inquisition. Alright, they can take a Ren, but I got a backup Ren. They take one of my Rens. Mystic Sanctuary, getting back Crypt Command. Sure. Can I get a Raven's Crime, please? Smallpox. Well, I mean... First things first, let's try to get out Ren. They could have a Mana Leak, so let's actually play a Polluted Delta first. And then let's try to get out Ren. Spell Snares Ren. Alright, take up Lily. Ditch a Blooming Marsh. Smallpox. Drowns in the lock. All right, they got one card left though, so now it's time to start triggering this shrieking affliction. What's up, Grief Ophis? Welcome back. What is the goal of their deck? I don't even know what they're trying to do. Are they just literally Demir fairies? Are they fairies? This is fairies, isn't it? But why do they have Thought Scour? Oh, Thought Scour is for Drown in the lock. Okay, so they're going to bounce Lily, so Lily doesn't ult. But that's fine. At least they're not countering Lily. And they don't have Drown in the lockup. Ooh, Smallpox. Nice. Alright, let's fetch here. Let's go and grab Overgrown Tomb while we can. Um, play a land. Fetch here. Go and grab a basic swamp. Bolt you. Smallpox. Sacrifice a swamp. Take up Lily. Now they got zero cards in hand. And four lands, and they're starting to take Shrieking Affliction every turn. So I think they're locked at this point, because they literally cannot cast anything as long as I got this Shrieking Affliction here. So they are locked. They cannot do anything now. And Lily is making them ditch cards. Yeah, it's over. Like, you're dead. <laughs> and another smallpox. Salt in the wound, boy. Sack another land, please. Discard another card that you don't even have and pass a turn. Demir Stall, probably, but I'm thinking just fairies. They got Jace the Mind Sculptor, Crypto Command, Drown of the Lock, Thought Scour, Spell Snare. So it's literally just Demir Control. It's just Demir Control. Crypto Command's gonna bounce the Shrieking Affliction just to keep themselves alive another turn. They're gonna bounce it at the end of our turn, and then they're gonna end up trying to top deck a counter spell to counter Shrieking Affliction on the way down, but it's not gonna work because I got Liliana still. Yeah, they gotta do whatever on, on my upkeep. So, yeah, I literally just ran here, and if they want to counterbalance Lily, they still die. If they counterbalance Shrieking Affliction, I replay Shrieking Affliction. If they counterbalance Lily, they're still dead. <laughs> Counter draw, sure. Well, I can just do this, and you're dead. All right. There we go. Taking down a Demir something. That was game number one, though. We got game number two to go, which I'm going to probably bring in these Ashioks. And let's cut, let's cut all the bolts. I don't think we need them. Let's bring in the Maelstrom Pulses as well to deal with their Jace the Mind Sculptors. And run it like that. They could have uh, their own Ashiok Dream Render, so let's bring in Abrupt Decay over in Snaring Bridge. 
Come on. Come on, bring it in. Stop lagging mode. Dang it. Got a mulligan that one. The problem is they got their own Inquisitions and Thought Seizes, so we have to worry about getting Thought Seized. That looks good. Let's keep that. And let's throw away... I'm going to throw away Inquisition because I know they're going to Thought Seize one of my Lilies and I'm going to need the backup Lily. That's a GG. They didn't Thought Seize my Lily. The Rack. Well, let's get this Tap Land out of the way. Cracks flooded strand, flooded strudels, watery Dave, polluted delta. Karn. All right, play the rack. And Thought Scours me, mills over the rack and a wren. I thought it was rock and roll, not rack and wren. Field of Ruin. Urberg. Alright, oh, I don't want them to kill one of my colored sources. Okay, Urborg might be an appealing target. Liliana? Field of Ruins, the red source. Sure. But at least Lily's resolving. Lily's here. Alright, let's discard one of my redundant Lilies because now the next task is get Karn to resolve and they do have cryptic commands. So, now I'm gonna start dropping out Karns one by one, trying to get them to resolve. And once they do, we probably win. See, Diothar... Karn is good. You just gotta find the right matchup. You gotta find either the Artifact Emery matchup, you gotta find the Control matchup, you gotta find the Aetherfile matchup, but yeah, Karn does work. And Snaring Bridge, I'll happily discard that. We don't need this bridge against them. And card. Oops. Don't use life. Use the color. We do got the Urborg after all. Oh, it resolved. Okay, let's minus. What are we going to get? Um, Let's get the Scepter of Fugue here. I think that seems pretty good. You know... I'm going to actually get Liquid Metal Coating. I'm going to get Liquid Metal Coating because I have a backup Karn, so if I go for it and it gets countered, then, you know, I still got the backup Karn to, like, play it and still use Liquid Metal Coating. So I have two chances here to get this Liquid Metal Coating to work. They mill over Karn number three. Alright, take a Lily. Discard a land. Play liquid metal coating. Target a watery grave. Yeah, they scoop it up. They're they're not gonna deal with me liquid metal coating their lands. <laughs> nice. Took down Demir Control. We didn't see what their ultimate plan was, but I assume it's just like Torrential Gearhulk, maybe Scarab God. Could be Scarab God. Got a game here against Todd Gundry, and we're going to be in the draw with some Jund, Ren, Rack. Um, yeah, it looks pretty good. I'll keep this, because uh, whenever there's a hand with Smallpox and Ren, it's a good hand. Cannot go wrong with that. All right, what you on, Todd? Todd is a meme in the Oats and Goats community. I don't know what it is. If you watch Oats and Goats out there and you know who Todd is, let me know. I'm curious. 
but Todd is apparently Oats and Goats' girlfriend or something like that. Or so that's the lore, I think. All right, Aether Vile. So Karn would be amazing. All right, we're gonna reveal what we're on immediately. Hopefully this is not humans. I'm hoping this is just merfolk because every once in a blue moon, merfolk plays Sea Chrome Coast to get around Choke. But that was back in the day. So this is likely humans, but I hope it's not. Okay, it's not. So this is, uh, oh, it's death and taxes. All right, polluted delta, and I'm gonna fetch right now before they end up violing and cat Jesus and killing us. So let's go get our overrun too. And then next turn we will Ren and blast Liliana or Thalia or whatever. Blue white spirits may have also been a possibility. Yeah, true. That's a bummer. Now give her runes protects uh, Thalia. They shocked, so they probably have up even Mind Sensor or Spell Queller. Like, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for Ren here, and if it gets Spell Quelled, I'm scooping. Actually, you know what? I think let's just start going for Smallpoxes. Eldrazi Displacer. You know what? Yeah, I'm going for smallpoxes. That seems good to me. They got one card left in hand. They're going to have to ditch it or vial it in. Either or. But I want them to lose their giver of runes. So let's discard a Ren here. Because I want to be able to Ren and blast their Thalia. They had another Displacer. Okay, good. And we made him discard a 3-3. They ditch their Giver. Alright, we're super close. Now they lose 3 life to Shrieking Affliction. Come on, don't find anything good for that vial to bring in. And then we win this. Vial's up to three. So, part of me wants to smallpox first. But you know what? Nah, let's just run. Be safe about it. I swear, they violin spell queller. Alright. Kill Thalia, redirect the aggression to Eldrazi Displacer. Now we're tying things up at 11 11. This is a race. This is hard. But if they whiff on another creature here, this smallpox is going to be a massive tempo play if they whiff on another creature right now. So make them ditch another land, and they're then they're stuck to whatever vial lets them use. They're gonna go after me. They're not caring about Ren at all. The rack also nice. Okay, give me back this swamp. Play the swamp. Lay the rack. No spell queller. Smallpox. Come on, if this smallpox resolves, we're probably winning. Oh man, it resolved. I think we win now, guys. They're taking some massive Demoglios. They're taking five at their upkeep. They had a Teferi Time Raveler in hand. Nice. And now they're sacking a land, too. 
So now they're limited to only three drops. Only three drops is only the only thing they can play because the vials is all they have left. And if I get a Karn off the top, that'd just be a punch in the face. Be a punch in the face, a slap in the goose. Yeah, Smallpox Ren is great synergy. That's the reason Ren's in here. It's a reason that it's a eight rack deck that's usually mono black that's splashing red and green. All right, draw step resto. What is happening? Thought not here in our draw step. Sure, I don't do anything. But now you're dead. They just wanted to see some information before they scoop. All right, blast your face. And you are dead on your upkeep. In a vacuum, Ren seems not great. Then again, a 2CMC Planeswalker better than Tybalt. Yep. Way better than Tybalt. Alright, moving on to the sideboard against Blue-White Death and Taxes. Probably want Maelstrom Pulse and Abrupt Decay. And probably don't want Liliana. Let's run it like that. You know, I kind of want to mainboard a Ballista here over Liliana. Because for two mana, not being affected by Thalia and then killing Thalia would be great. Because being on the draw against a Thalia is going to be a nightmare. So yeah, I was just bringing this Ballista. I probably should also bring in the bridge. Just because I don't think we're going to have the time to go car and find a bridge. We really need a good, like, removal draw out early on. Or else it's just not going to work out. But we'll see. Oh, there's a bridge right there. Okay, I'll keep this. And their way to deal with the bridge is Flicker Wisp, so we gotta worry about Flicker Wisp. Aether Vial off of Basic Plains. Wrench Mine solid. They already used their vial. Legacy has some really unfair lands. Yeah, definitely. Wasteland. The addition of Eldrazi Temple. Good. You know, when you're playing Arak, you always want to make your opponent discard lands. And if they do it, that, that just means they played around you wrong. You always want to discard non-lands against Arak. You always want to keep your lands because you're going to wish you kept them later. Thalia is annoying. Now I can't wrench mine anymore. Or not this turn at least. There's a Ren. But all we can do here is... Uh, let's just... Um, Raven's Crime again. I'll find another land to get this, this ensnaring bridge out. They're gonna vial in something. Give her runes. Give her runes. One card left in hand. And they ditch another Eldrazi Temple. I'm fine with them ditching lands. Because that just makes future smallpoxes even more devastating. Um. All right, Nurturing Pea Land. Do I dare wrench mine them right now? I'm going to do it. Please don't file anything in. Come on, no vials. No vials. Come on, ditch these two cards. No, they have something to do. Stone Frog Mystic. And now they get to cheat a Batter Skull in. But, but they're going to have to discard two cards unless they discard an artifact. So, what are you going to do, opponent? You're going to ditch that Batter Skull? They're ditching the Batter Skull. All right, and I can get out Bridge next turn. And if they don't have a Spell Queller or a Deputy of Detention, this Bridge is coming down.
taking it. Why are they leaving up stone floors? They got another equipment to bring in. All right, I'm going for this bridge. Uh, let's grab a blood crypt. And then let's go bridge. Come on, no queller, no queller. No queller. Yay, it resolves. Come on, no deputy. Now we just need no deputy. Okay, they're 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 violating in a sword. What sword is it gonna be? Sword oh, a second batter skull? Wow, I've never seen a, a stone frog deck play two batter skulls. That's crazy. No, no, uh, I can't. I can't. Uh, Libba, your friend, free for free. I can't do that because uh, they have giver runes. If I were to try to kill Thalia, uh, giver runes would protect it. But now they tapped out, but they have another giver. But it's losing summoning sickness, so I can just run and, and kill the Thalia here. So let's go with green, red, whatever. Minus on Thalia. And then let us go with land, rack, shrieking affliction. All right, that looks pretty good. They are now in top deck mode in need of a deputy attention, and I have two racks draining them from six at a time. So it's a four turn clock. Can you find a deputy in four turns? I think we got this. Watch your life total. Yeah, I see my life total, but they can't hit me. The plan with eight rack is to stabilize and get the bridge out and barely live on a hair and then come back into it. Yeah, that was a sweet turn. They got another Thalia, but that's okay. All right, let's just empty our hand here and play this Inquisition. And then let us use this Ren for the Swamp. Play the Swamp. All right, I could actually have them on a two turn clock if I minus Ren to blast their face for one damage. All right, they're at seven. If they play any card here, they die because I just minus ran on their face. So hopefully they don't see that play and just play a card. Do we get it? Question mark, passing the turn. Okay. Um, so I minus Ren on their face and this forces them this forces them to play nothing because if they play something they die so getting to the six here means they get to play nothing and let's go Karn and then Karn is just going to plus on nothing and now they can't use Vile anymore so they can't even do anything at flash speed and now they go to one. I was just one mana short of playing a, a second rack there. Actually, I could have done it if I went uh, Ren, get back, pull it a Delta, play a crack it. Karn, go and grab another rack, play the rack. So yeah, I could have actually killed them there. But I was fearing that they would have like a spell queller to violin. And we got there against blue white taxes. And I'm surprised. I thought that was going to be an awful matchup. But, you know, enough removal and then a bridge resolving is all it takes. And Karn is so clutch against uh, Vile decks. Just making it so their Vile is shut off. So you really have nothing to worry about at instant speed. It's great. Got a game here against a Wilton Varen Richter. And yes, we're going to be on the play with some 8-rack. With some Ren 
friendly at your act, and that's gonna be a mulligan. See, every single round, every single round's opener, YouTube, spoilers, but every single round's opener has been a one lander in a 24 land deck. I don't understand. I do not understand. And a zero lander, well, this is crazy. This keeps happening every single round, and I don't understand it at all. Okay, I guess we're keeping this one and hope that Liliana on its own can win the game here. Let's ditch a rack and a land. Oops, wrong land. Didn't mean to play that. I'm not gonna play the turn one rack though, because if I can, if I can conceal any information, I will. All right, crack here. Go grab a blood crypt. Yo, in Snaring Bridge, there might be some hope. Oh yeah, you got that right, Gas Chamber Hoax. What is your name based around? Sounds like an unexplained mystery. Temple Garden into- oh, please don't be- please don't be Voice Resurgence. Voice Resurgence is Liliana's number one enemy. And it's Voice Resurgence. Alright, well, we're gonna have to play Ensnaring Bridge here. Because then I could protect Liliana. Um, but it's a good thing that a green-white deck like theirs shouldn't have an answer to uh, Rack and Bridge unless they're playing a Singleton Kasali Pride Mage. Galia and Noble. Gets in for two. We'll take it. Alright, let's go Liliana. Let's take it up and ditch a bolt. And now they can only swing with Noble and hit Lily for one. So if they don't have their Singleton Kazali, then we're good. Then we win. Bloodbraid Elf into Bronze Hide Lion. Oh, that's not going to do it. So this is a Naya Zoo deck that's been winning uh, lately. And I love me some Naya Zoo. I love Zoo. That's like my bread and butter. Going to hit Lily for one. Sure. All right, let's play a Black Cleave Cliffs. Play a Rack number two. And we're cheesing them here with Bridge. Zero cards left. You're taking six to the face. You're dead in two turns. And they're in top deck mode. Got him. Easy as that. And that's how 8-Rack go. That is why I love Bridge and 8-Rack. I don't know why people stop playing Bridge and 8-Rack. Like, literally, this card wins games. And I definitely want to go up to a third of in the main board. You haven't played against Zoo? How does it work? What does it want to do? It just plays creatures. It just plays things like Voice Resurgence, now Gallia, Bloodbraid, Lions, Ramp Dorks. It's it's super good. I like it a lot. I love Zoo. Alright, we're gonna bring in Abrupt Decay and Maelstrom Pulse, right? Probably not. No, we're not. I'm just gonna leave it the same because I don't want to cut things like Bolt and Inquisition to take their answer to Bridge and stuff like that. Just leave it the same. Although, Abrupt Decay is pretty good. Maybe I want that over, like, a Lily, because Lily's not good against Voice Resurgence. Lily's not good against Hyper Aggro. Aw, oh, it submitted too quickly. Arak feels like a bad Lantern control. Well, then fight it. Alright, that looks pretty good. I'll keep that. We're going to have to fetch and shock twice here. But uh, red and six plus smallpox, that's the dream. I do need a third land, though. Oh, there's our bridge. All right, let's get a uh, blood crypt here. Let's bolt this now while we can. Come on, no voice, no voice. Oh man, that's good against smallpox. Ooh, but I did get the land though. 
Let's go nurturing peatland. Let's go red and six. Red, green. And let us return this bloodstained mire. Hopefully they can't kill red. Giver. And nothing. No, they bolt red. All right, what do I do now? I can get out bridge, and then I can try. I can, I can proceed to Raven's Crime myself. Okay, let's do that. So let's go polluted delta, crack it. Let's get a basic swamp and get out bridge. And then next turn I can smallpox, and then Raven's Crime me. I probably should have smallpox and Raven's Crab now. Because if they if their last card in their hand is an answer to bridge, then I will regret it. Bronze hide? Alright, looking good. Looking good. Taking three. Alright, let's see. I can go. Play a land, shock, smallpox, uh, ditch the bloodstained mire, then I can raven's crime them, then I can bolt them. And then all I'll be left with in hand is Liliana. Okay, let's do that. So, bloodstained mire, shock. Yeah. Salty soda, thank you for the follow, how are you doing? Let's go smallpox. They're gonna bolt my face. Sure. Ditch Bloodstained Mire. Ditch a Swamp. They make a Tugan. Bolt their face. Raven's Crime. Yep, yeah, Raven's Crime. I need Lily. I'm going to take one here. I'm going to get myself in bolt range. Maybe I should have just Raven's Cry myself to not get myself in bolt range. Or not really, but you get it. Alright, uh, tap land. Lily. And make you discard. It was a gruel spell breaker. Alright, sweet. It's gonna be so close, guys. Super close. Oh no! Noble ends the game. Noble ends the game, guys. Alright, well, I have to find a way to take care of that noble. So make you sack. What you putting it on? They're putting it on the noble. RG. Red. Get back a swamp. Crack this. Another lily. Okay, I'm gonna need to sack the heck out of them next turn. Oh, wait. I lose now. Why'd I use Ren's second ability? I don't know. Yeah, the Giver runes. Alright, let's go to sideboard. I'm gonna run it right back. Or maybe I do bring an Abrupt Decay Maelstrom Pulse over Lily, because Lily's not good here. No, 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 no. Alright, let's do it like that. Ren's not good here. Take down? No, dude. Giver Runes is a 1-2. Giver Runes is a 1-2. I couldn't blast it with Ren. I wanted to. Alright, would you like to play first? Yes. Okay, I'll keep that one. That looks pretty good. Um. Alright, let's get out this rack here. 
even though we're taking damage. Give her runes. All right, I think I'll just, uh, yeah, let's just, um, let's just small pox here. And I'll ditch Abrupt Decay, probably. No, they have Smiter. It's gonna be hard to beat that. I'm gonna be hurt dearly. I'm gonna get really low here. Oh, was that their only green source? Might be in business. All right, let's get our green source. Taking a big amount of pain. But let us wrench, mind you. If you got any more smiters, we die. All right, they did bronze tad line and gruel spellbreaker. Come on, no lands, no lands. Oh, they had a land. All right, if I don't get a land here, I'm dying. I'm dying without a land here. Come on. Come on, we're so close. Bolt. Inquisition. Take Bronzeside Lion. All right, I'm gonna have to give him a voice token. I'm, I'm gonna live on one here. I need to bolt the voice. On their turn, give them a thing. But at least it can't kill me this turn. <laughs> and they found a bolt off the top. That'll do it. GG. Zoo is so good. It's so good. Got a game here against Mr. Zarakai. And we're going to be on the draw here with some... Jund 8 rack, and that's going to be a keep. That looks pretty good. What's our curve here? Affliction and the Ranch Mine and the Lily seems pretty good. But hopefully they don't play two creatures by then, because if they play two creatures by then, they get around our stuff. We can't let them get around our stuff. Oh, is this the Emery deck? Don't tell me it's Emery. Come on. Hedron Crab. Oh, please don't be Sultai Self Mill. Please just be Mill. Come on, be mill, be mill, 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 mill. Okay, Polita Delta, but it still could be Sultai Self Mill. Yay, they're milling us. Imagine Kroxa in this matchup. They mill our Kroxas. That'd be delicious. Attacking with a crab. Nice. Swinging with a crab. What if I had a Bomat Courier, dude? Alright. Shock here. Our life totals are relevant. Wrench, mind ya. Down to two cards left. But they could uh, they could counter it with the Drown in the Lock here. And they are. But good thing that's not going to counter our Lily. Please mill over a Raven's Crime. Because if I can, I go, I will go Raven's Crime plus Inquisition plus Shrieking Affliction. Because I want to make them ditch more cards first. Whoa, Astrolabe, it's Snow Mill. Imagine Mill with Astrolabe and Ice Fang Kotal. Wait, what do they do? Okay, they milled us for three. We didn't hit a Raven's Crime. I guess I will just go Lily Sack. Mishra's Bobble. Interesting. Why do you have that in Mill? Are you really trying to, like, delve out a Taziger? Or a Gurmag Angler? That make no sense. Why do you... Oh, wait. I think I see. Ooh, I could go Inquisition plus Shrieking Affliction plus Rack. It's a lot of Rackage right there. But you know what? We gotta stop the Millening, so let's just Liliana... 
They got another drown? Wow, they got another drown. Another crab? Do they got a fetch? Don't tell me you got a fetch. Oh, Field of the Ruins or Dead or whatever it's called. Um, but a Karn would be great because we can go and get... Okay, there's a red. A Karn would be great because we can go and get a... Um, whatchamacallit? Um, what do you call that card? Uh, Witchbane Orb. Um, I think I'm just going to go Inquisition plus Shrieking Affliction plus Rack. That's pretty hefty. It's a watery grave. Um, okay, in this case, I'm going to go Ren. Red, green. I can get Ren down safely and return a Bloodstained Mire. Play it, crack it, get a swamp, play a, let's play another Shrieking Affliction since they're at one. This will deal more damage than a rack would. Or since they got one card in hand. All right, double Shrieking Affliction trigger. You take six. You're down to 13. And we're getting super close. Please, if you mill us, mill a Raven's Crime. Mill a Raven's Crime. Come on. Come on. Show me that Raven's Crime. There's four in the deck. We're already half the deck deep. Give me that Raven's Crime. Where that do? Come on, where's my Raven's Crime? Please. Please hit the Raven's Crime. Highly likely to hit. Yeah, we're highly likely. We got 27 cards left in the deck and there's four. There it is. Finally. Okay. They can mill six more if they crack this field of ruin. Oh, another rack. They're dead here. Yo. All right. Bring back whatever land. It don't matter. All right. Raven's crime ya. Yeah. They're super dead here. Ravens crime ya. I just drew all the racks. Rack. And rack. And that is exact seas 12. And that is what we call nice. I mean, that's our secondary definition of nice in today's community. But that is, uh... That is nice. And you... Dead. Alright, let's go into sideboarding. Um, we're gonna bring in Ashi... No? No? Maybe not. Um, Witchbane Orb. I don't know if I should main board Witchbane Orb or if I should keep it in the sideboard for Karn to grab. I think I'm gonna keep it in the sideboard for Karn to grab. That gives me more of an opportunity to get it. But do I want Ashiok is the is the thing? I don't want bridge. I know I don't want bridges. So let's bring in Ashiox. Or do I bring in Maelstrom Pulse? Let's bring in Abrupt Decay and Maelstrom Pulse. Yo, has in hand. Hi, Marin. Hello, has in hand. Welcome. Thank you for resubscribing for four months in a row. Welcome back to the Marination. S enjoy your emotes. Soon to be more. They're in the making right now. I have a really nice artist that I'm commissioning. And uh, yeah, they showed me a sketch last night and it looks pretty good. Uh, didn't you literally just resubscribe like the other day? Okay, small pox plus rent. I'll keep it. Looks good. And I can even bolt a turn one crab. Oh yeah, I'm definitely turn one bolting that. Oh yeah. I feel like uh, this deck can get away with a play set of Black Cleave and Blooming Marsh. Just like bolt the fast lands just to save some damage. But then again, you want at least one fetch for Ren, but it can get by like that.
the chat tell you to click the thing? Oh, oh, it didn't show up. That's what it did. Because maybe it's just popping up again because now we're using Streamlabs OBS instead of normal OBS. Oh no, Mesmeric Orb. All right, um, do I play Ren here or do I play Smallpox? Um, no, Ren first, right? No, 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 Smallpox first. Yeah, Smallpox first, make him sack a land. And then I discard less than Mesmeric Orb. I play a land, use Ren to get back a land. Okay, let's go smallpox. Let's ditch a polluted delta and sack a swamp. No, I probably should have went Ren first, right? I don't know. What would you do, Dialthar? I don't play 8 rack that often. Would you Ren first or would you 8 rack first? You would pox or oh wait. I mean, I mean, smallpox or Ren. And you said pox? All right, that's good. You want to make them ditch their mana while it's low, I guess. You don't want them to get up to three mana and play potentially a Ashiok. Yo, Raven's Crime. Okay, um, a shock here. I'm going to double Raven's Crime them. I don't want them to have cards before I play Ren. There we go. They're fetching. What are they doing now? Shocking. Are they literally dr why? What the heck? Why are you drowning that? Just discard drown. You didn't. Have, you had no reason to shock there. <laughs> they had no reason to shock there. All right. Um, red. Green, Ren, get back a Blooming Marsh, play a Blooming Marsh, Ravens Crime you. Now all I gotta do is find some racks. Let's see, I did get no racks milled. No racks milled. Mishra's Bobble. They probably don't want to crack that yet. Yeah, they're not. So let's take up Ren and get back a... Um, I, I don't want to thin my deck, so let's just get back a Swamp and play a Swamp. And I don't need to use the Raven's Crime since they got zero cards right now. And I just want my fourth land for Karn. They have Karn Sign of Urza in there. Maybe that's why they got Mishra's Bobble. They want to make the Karn Struck fatties. Okay, two cards in hand. And uh, once I get um, Ren to seven, I can just start retracing a bolt every turn. Ooh, smallpox. All right. Uh, smallpox. Drown in the Luke. All right, let's get back a Bloodstained Mirror. Play a Bloodstained Mirror. I want another red. I want another red mana. Because I once I get red to ult here, and I start recurring bolt, or retracing bolt twice per turn, I want double red for that. Okay, before they make me mill another red source, let's go fetch for that red source. Let's get a Boo Crypt. Okay, uh, two racks and a Karn got, got milled. Alright, use Ren, return, nurturing Peatland. Do I just crack it to draw here? And look for something to do? No, I definitely want to save it to retrace bolts. Because I'm going to ult Ren next turn. And I got to bolt them as much as I possibly can. 
Oh no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ult Ren next turn. I'm not gonna ult Ren next turn. I wanna keep Ren alive because he's my way to recur bolt. <laughs> Mixed Extinctuary is getting back glimpse the unthinkable. They're gonna mill me even more. Alright, um, I'm gonna bolt you now. Make best use of my red mana. Okay, I can just ult red now. Bolt you. Ditch a land. Bull I don't know. I don't need to do this. I don't need to do this sorcery speed, but whatever. And next turn we win. Alright. Opponent. Are you top decking Archive Trap? You can't. You can't tap top deck Archive Trap because it's five mana. So yeah. Misha's Bobble, you're dead. Got them. We got them. And... Boltcha again. That is four bolts. Taking down Mill in the most stylish way possible. The sweet. We got him with like the double double rack, double shrieking into quad bolt. It's like these multiples of four here. Something's going on with the multiples of four. But sweet. Got a game here against Darius1977. Oh, that's an old timer. Um, let's keep his hand. Playing some Jund Rack. So Darius1977 is 42 years old. Yo! Did they seriously just play a turn one ley line? Okay. Uh I don't want to reveal any information. I don't want to reveal any information. I do not. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to discard. What does Miss Veil vale Plains tell me? I'm going to ditch a lightning bolt. I'm going to go to discard. And I'm going to ditch a lightning bolt. Lightning bolt will tell them that I'm probably burn and I'm probably not 8 rack. So therefore when we go to game number 2 they'll probably prepare wrong. Field of ruin. Or field, field of ruin. What the heck are they doing? I am freaked out. But I'm scooping. Um, so we have to bring in Maelstrom Pulses. We gotta kill a Ley Line. So bring in Maelstrom Pulse. Cut. Probably Bolts. Didn't look like they were gonna do anything there. I feel like we might need Abrupt Decay. Alright, let's try this again. Make them think I'm Rakdos. No, 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 no. I don't want to reveal any signs of pot potentially being the Rack. I don't want to reveal any signs of that at all. Would you like to play first? Yes. Okay, I'm keeping it. Come on. No Ley Line. No Ley Line. No Ley Line. No! Two Ley Lines. Okay, but I can find a Maelstrom Pulse. Well, it's game number two, so we gotta reveal it eventually. It's probably Enduring Ideal. Yeah, it's pro it probably is. But they had Field of Ruin and Miss Veil Plains. Does Enduring Ideal even play those? I don't think they do. Alright, how the heck? Alright, Overgrown Tomb. Get out Ren, I guess. Gotta just naturally draw... Hey guys, this is not the normal speed up session that we usually have at the ends of videos, but I just had to speed up this game in specific because it lasted very long. Um, so this match, all it was was land go, land go, 
And there's nothing we can do about their ley lines. There's nothing they could do about us. They're stuck on mana. And I'm just using this Ren ticking up forever until the point where I draw smallpox and I'm able to ult Ren and repeat smallpox over and over, make them ditch their lands until the point where I eventually get a Liliana or a Karn. And it's just a matter of time. So we're going to resume normal speed for game number three. And then after that, we're going to move on to our normal speed up session. Hope you enjoy. Yep, there it is. Oh, they mulligan so heavily for that. They went down to... Oh, they got one card left in hand, dude. That is fine. And it sucks that this Abrupt Decay is not a Maelstrom Pulse. <laughs> Alright, Blood Crypt tab, go. We got this. Easy mode. It's just a matter of finding Karn. Oh, that's a good draw, actually. They could be getting back in it. Yo, there's Karn. Perfect. And you know, you know what stops? You know what stops them from having cards in hand through Leyline? Liliana. And we got it. We got just that. The perfect recipe. And then we got Karn after that. Yo, what's up, Snap Keep Gaming? Hoping for a speed run? Alright, tick up Ren. Shock. Liliana. And also, Liliana ulting can uh, make them sack the ley line. It's like either do you want to sack all your lands or ley line, and then they're gonna to have to sack the ley line, and then they die. So, yeah, easy mode. And they discard path to exile, dude. I have no creatures. I played in snaring bridge. You should know that by now. All right, take up Lily. Discard overgrown tomb. Take up Ren, get back Overgrown Tomb, play Overgrown Tomb, shock Overgrown Tomb, tap Overgrown Tomb, play Karn. That Overgrown Tomb just went on a magical journey. We drew it, discarded it, got it back, played it, tapped it. All right. No, no, no. We're going to minus Karn. And let's go and grab Liquid Metal Coating. And then we'll just turn Leyline into an artifact, turn into a creature, and then we'll make him sack it with Lily. So yes, let's go and grab... Liquid metal coating. Yeah. You can't target. No, I target their, their ley line. And then I use Karn to turn ley line into a 4-4. Four four, and then I make them sack it with Lily. Oh, that's right. I can't target them with Lily. But still, we're going to make them ditch their lands. All right. And they scoop it up. And we got there through ley line. They, they got super greedy and aggressively mold for it. You didn't need to do that opponent. You should have just kept your seven card opener. I know they were thinking about it too. Before we get into the sped up rounds of the video, I would like to remind you that if you were considering purchasing today's deck or any cards really, it would be awesome if you purchased through our deck list link down below. That is our tcgplayer.com affiliate link. And when you purchase through that link, it really helps support the channel. And with that being said, let's resume the video. Hope you enjoy. Hello everybody and welcome to the speed up session for today's video. We'd like to speed up the longest games in the video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. And as I always say, if you want to catch the full games unsped up, unedited, and uncut for the videos, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD there. So I'm just going to go ahead and take my time because we're speeding up the next four rounds and they were quite slow. So believe me, we have some time to kill. So I guess I ought to talk about some other things first, like the fact that there was a lot of background noise during today's gameplay. I'll probably post that in like uh, like a little message at the intro and like before the gameplay starts, I'm probably going to end up editing that in. But just in case you missed all of that, if you heard a lot of background noise in the video today, it is because uh, I'm, I was using Streamlabs OBS for the first time. For the entire two years I've been recording YouTube videos and streaming, I've always done or I've always used OBS Studio. And this is my first time ever using Streamlabs. So when I, I try to set everything up and configure everything exactly to as I had it in OBS Studio, 
But one thing, the very last thing I forgot to do was put noise gate and noise suppression on my microphone. Therefore, you know, it was, I, I was capturing a lot of background audio. So there was that. Anyways, let me start commenting, commentating this first game. So we're going up against Team or Snow. And, you know, it's a good reason not to commentate it because it's such a boring, long control matchup and Uro keeps coming back. It's like, Uro is like the ultimate just counter to a eight rack deck that doesn't have ensnaring bridge on the battlefield. It's just like, I get the, the ensnaring bridge there, but they're able to like kill it with, uh, cause they have Emery and it gets back engineered explosives and Uro comes back like five times. And it's just like, I can't like every time I kill it. And I, I'm just hoping for the miracle of like, please Liliana make him sack it. And at the perfect moment when, when I was like, okay, Liliana needs to take up one more time and then I can keep it alive by minusing again. They actually top decked right at that very moment. They top decked their breeding pool. They needed to actually cast Uro. And so it was just very, very lucky on their part. And if they didn't get that breeding pool exactly at that turn when they did, because that match went on like 30 turns. It was like a long game. If they didn't get that breeding pool exactly the turn they did, uh, it would have been completely different because my Lily would have been alive and been able to make Uro get sacrificed again. And I was starting to stack those racks and starting to drain them out like crazy. But you can imagine how it goes when we're a discard deck and we don't really have graveyard hate that we're going to go get with Karn. Instead, I choose to get, um, I think it was what I get. I got another ensnaring ridge. Or no, I got the scepter of fugue there. But yeah, I didn't have a constant, consistent source of graveyard hate. So something like Uro... When I'm making them discard it and making them discard a bunch of other cards and filling their graveyard for them, Uro is something that could just keep coming back over and over and over and over and over and over and I can't deal with it. So that's how broken of a card Uro is against a mid-rangey stall control deck like like this is. Thanks, Wizards, for printing Uro. So we go into the next game, and this is against Allies. Now, um, fun fact, Allies is the first deck we ever 5 0 to league with on the channel. And that was back when we used to do leagues. And I, you know, I deleted a bunch of old stuff on the channel because there's a point where, you know, I had just like dreadfully horrible quality. I know it seems like kind of a selfish thing to do, but I did do that. Like, cause you know, there was some embarrassing, embarrassing content that I made. And so I just, you know, went and hit all that stuff. But I don't know if the allies video is still there if you want to go check it out. But yeah, first deck we ever 5 0 to league with and we're fighting against it. So that is pretty cool. It's a, actually like a very, very, very strong tribe. It's because it has um, Auto Free Blade, Kazandu Blade Master, and Ornery Survivalist. And there's even um, a black version of it as well, which I can't remember because there's the two white, because uh, they're. The allies, you know, champion of the parish for humans, you know, like whenever a human enters, it gets a counter and all these chant whenever a human enters, it gets a counter allies has that, um, four of those. There's the, the, the one black one, the one green one and the two white ones. So basically allies has four different champion of the parishes. So it just, once you have that, those five color lands, like cavern of souls, unclaimed territory, ally encampment and ancient ziggurat, and then aether vial, and then you even got that Harabaz druid. You, you, like, color is not an issue for five color allies, and you can just play all of the Champion of the Parish effects. So it's definitely one of the fatter tribes that people don't really play. And I'm not sure why, because it's insane. Um, so what they try to do, the reason this game was really sped up, um, it, this game was long just because game number two, or game number one, rather, the opponent was hiding behind these Ondu clerics and just gaining up to, like, 50-something life. And convenient, because their name is 5,000. Um... And they just, that's what made the game take forever because they refused to concede. And I had them beat for like 20 minutes and they weren't conceding when I had like Karn and Liquid Metal Coating and I was destroying all of their permanents and I ulted Ren and I had a recurrable bolt and there was just nothing they could do, but they just weren't scooping. But I ended up beating them. So they, they ended up finally scooping under the pressure. So we go on to game number three of the speed up rounds. And this is against humans. Now, right here, exactly that turn when they played Freebooter, they were empty handed. And I was like, I was even telling the chat, you can go watch it back on the stream if you want. But I was saying the only thing that would beat us here is Freebooter and a Mantis Rider. And what did they do? They topped that Freebooter into Mantis Rider. Like, are you actually kidding me? There, that was like a one in a million chance, but they did it. And uh, they ended up beating us. And then I was very salty for the rest of the game. So it's a good thing that this is a sped up round. 
So game number two here, I want to inquisition them. Their hand is the most obnoxious thing. It was, um, it was like Kite Self Rebooter, um, Mantis Rider, Noble Hierarch, Mirren Crusader. And I didn't know what the heck I was supposed to take in that hand because I wanted to take a turn one player. So no, a turn one place so Noble was good. I, I had to take Mirren Crusader because it's protection from green and black. And obviously I can't remove it. And then there was the Mantis Rider, which they could throw out on turn two if I let them keep the Noble. So that's that's a turn two, four, four, Flying Vigilance Haste, which would kill me quickly. And then the Kite Self Rebooter would then take my Maelstrom Pulse. So every single thing in their hand was obnoxious and I just, I couldn't deal with it. So they take us down and I'm still salty about that one because of game number one when they got that clutch top deck uh, Kite Sail in the Mantis Rider um, for the game. Nothing else in their deck would have got it except that. <laughs> but we go on to the last game, the last bet of game of the video. And this is against a Red White Norin and Sisters. So huge shout outs to this opponent for playing Norin Sisters because that's a really cool deck and and you don't really see it too often. It's, it's really good. And um, I'm a big fan. And we did play it on the channel at least a couple times um, but anyways, I have I'm hiding behind this bridge for like ever. I'm just hiding behind this bridge for eternity until I can eventually drain them out. And there's really not a whole lot to commentate because this game, the only reason why it was mildly long at all, uh, the reason that it actually had some length to it was because of their soul sister effects just constantly gaining life whenever they play creatures, allowing them to continually try to stabilize. And um, I was just trying to look for like a Karn or a Lily or a Wren or something. And I'm just forever just trying to stall or just trying to get that. But they constantly like I have them at one life here, as you can see. And they just constantly, constantly, constantly just keep finding a way to stay alive because they're they're trying to stay above um, one card in hand so that tr a Shrieking Affliction doesn't trigger. I eventually get the rack, which is nice. And they have to um, get uh, save even more cards in hand. But for some reason, at a certain point, they decide to just spit out their hand. I don't know. I, I don't know if they're just tired of, like, trying to survive or anything like that. But they just play their hand out when they should have just kept it. But they, they basically conceded that round to us. So we're going to go into the last one. And um, this game was a little bit different. Um, so this was just like humans, where they ended up luck sacking into top decks. But they ended up getting Perforos into, I was just like, please, like they, they had the they top deck Perforos. I was just, please don't have Norn because Norn would be the one thing that would just like be so brutal here to deal with. And then they top deck champion into Norn. And, you know, I'm not going to beat the Norn with the Perforos because every single action causes it to bounce and trigger Perforos. And I actually have no life gain in here. So GG to Red White uh, Norn sisters. I can do my outro and we're done. So we ended up with five total wins. And I honestly think that Bridge should be a like four of. And that Karn could be cut, I think, is, is the answer. But Karn was so good in certain matchups, but just like like, I don't know. Somehow we we're getting land screwed despite it being a 24 land deck, even like you know, Ren helps, but people sometimes, like, Inquisition him or counter him or, you know, attack him with the creature. He doesn't kill everything. He only kills X1s, but he's so good. And then, but, like, if you don't have Ren and then you just, like, cast a smallpox and you don't have a Ren, then you're just never getting to Karn. Because sacking a land and then discarding a card so that you you just, it, lo it heavily lowers your chances of getting up to Karn. So... Karn was amazing whenever he was there, but I think that I would rather just go, like, two more bridges, cut Karn. Because Bridge was amazing, you know? Like, Bridge is, like, the savior of, like, it protects the Ren and protects the Lily, which are our main sources of power and causing our opponent to discard cards. And I have no idea why um, these kinds of decks, like, stopped running um ensnaring bridge i i don't understand why the racks don't run ensnaring bridge anymore they're so good um and the rest of the deck was fine the wrench mind is filler it, it is good filler but it's filler and all the rest of the deck i feel like is is exactly where it should be you know smallpox and wren is amazing 
uh, Raven's Crown plus Ren is amazing. And then getting to that ult with Ren and recurring smallpox every single turn is amazing. Just landlocks your opponent. Having the, th the three racks and the fourth one on the board for Karn was good. But if you cut Karn, you can just go up to the fourth rack like that. Bolts are, are really good when you have ensnaring bridges in your deck because not only does, does Bolt um, make it an alternate win con with Ren's ult, recurring a Bolt every turn if you don't have like a rack out, but also if you have bridge and you were to top deck a Fatal Push, it wouldn't do anything. So Bolt actually goes to face, so it works. Um, so yeah, I, I overall, I, I think the deck is pretty decent. I like it, but it's, it's easy to tempo out. I think it could use a few changes, but it's up to you. Let me know what you think about the deck in the comments down below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you're new for the spiciest of gameplay every other day. And, uh, like I said at the beginning of the stream... Uh, this is the first time that I'm using Streamlabs OBS. So if there's anything like obviously noticeably different that should be fixed, let me know if you spot anything. Um, but yeah, I try to replicate the same setup that I usually have in videos. So let me know if like something seems off. And um, I'll probably put it in the comments down below. But for those who made it to this part of the video, the reason I was choosing to be on the play every single game, even though it's, it's an 8-rack deck, because usually 8-rack decks used to be, um, would be on the draw, it's because of Karn. Because Karn's 4 mana, and I want to get up to that quicker than the opponent can like use to disrupt us, you know? So that's why I chose to be on the play every time. Um, but yeah, 8-rack typically is on the draw. Uh, thank you to all the sponsors, the patrons, and the Twitch chat. If you want to play this deck for yourself, you should check out Mana Traders in the link down below. Sign up using the code Marin Moon to save 15% off. And you can rent today's deck as well as any future decks to play on the channel for an affordable monthly fee. And if you want to check out this deck and paper, consider purchasing through our deck list link down below. That is our TCGplayer.com affiliate link. And anything you purchase through there really helps out the channel. Thanks to the patrons and thank you for watching. I'm going to get on out of here and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.